Achtung, Achtung, hier Gustav Siegfried I. Ich komme gerade zurück aus Aachen. Und was ich da gesehen habe, ich kann nur sagen, London muss gebombt werden. In Klump und Scheiße muss London geschmissen werden. Da muss abgeladen werden, Tag und Nacht, dass kein Stein auf dem anderen bleibt. Behind me is a building that, as you can observe, has seen better days. But this is a location with a long, rich and exciting history. I've come to the Woburn Abbey estate in Bedfordshire, the family seat of the Duke of Bedford, to discover more about a highly secretive organization, the Political Warfare Executive, or PWE. It was here in this now dilapidated building that nearly 80 years ago and two years into the Second World War, the PWE set up its headquarters well away from prying eyes. President Donald Trump and others may talk about fake news as if it is a new concept thought up in the age of social media. My response to that is that they can have no knowledge of some of the spectacular wartime deceptions that were created here. By 1941, Germany was consolidating its power base, having first invaded Poland in 1939. It later moved into the Low Countries and France before setting its sights firmly on Britain. It was at the PWE that a special team of up to 500 operatives dreamt up some wild and wonderful tales designed at destabilizing the German and Italian war efforts. One of the most bizarre false rumours spread by the PWE was that the British government had imported 200 man-eating sharks from Australia and that they had been released in the English Channel to eat Germans whose invasion boats had been sunk. Early in the war, it was recognised that a new group was needed to be responsible for propaganda. Key to the group was secret, black or subversive propaganda where the true source of material is hidden. This contrasted with open, white or non-subversive propaganda such as BBC broadcasts that originated from the UK and made no attempt to hide their origins. The main aim of the PWE was to demoralise Germany and her allies by circulating information that was at best highly spun and at worst entirely made up. At the time, radio was the cheapest and the most easily accessible form of entertainment and information, and it was obvious that broadcasting via secret transmitters set up in Germany and other occupied countries would be a powerful propaganda weapon. Sefton Delmer was a British journalist who had lived in Berlin as a boy and spoke perfect German. He became Britain's most cunning and prolific black propagandist of the war, setting up most of the radio stations. Werden, Tag und Nacht, dass kein Stein auf dem anderen bleibt. Born in 1904, Delmer was educated in Berlin, London and Oxford and was working for the Daily Express in Germany in 1931, where he became the first British journalist to interview Adolf Hitler. To appear truly patriotic, GS1 had to make disparaging references about Churchill, describing him as the flat-footed son of a drunken Jew. Similar radio stations were set up in Italy. These included Radio Italia and Radio Liberta. Radio Liberta made vicious attacks on Mussolini's private life, including the false allegation that he had married his half-sister and comparing him to the Roman Emperor Caligula. Radio broadcasting and leaflet drops were two of just several tactics used by the PWE. They, with the help of the Special Operations Executive, sent agents to occupied countries who leaked forged documents and spread false rumours, known as SIBs. A simple SIB aimed at deterring the planned enemy invasion of Britain was that the English had invented a means of setting the sea on fire. Yet another rumour aimed at incensing the French population, was that the Eiffel Tower in Paris was going to be dismantled by the Germans so that the metal could be used for munitions. Bruce Lockhart was appointed as Director General of the PWE in 1942 
and he said that its role was to undermine and destroy the morale of the enemy and to sustain and foster the spirit of resistance in enemy-occupied countries. Today, there is a plan to turn this run-down building with its missing doors, broken windows and peeling paint into the site of a new military intelligence museum. If all goes to plan and a public fundraising campaign is successful, this would be the foremost museum of its kind in the world and, of course, an extremely fitting location for it. My own conclusion from studying the fascinating work of the PWE is that fake news is at least 80 years old and in this social media age, its future influence will only grow. It was Sir Winston Churchill, perhaps our greatest ever Prime Minister, who said, in wartime, truth is so precious that she should always be attended by a bodyguard of lies. For the last four years of the Second World War, that protective bodyguard role was carried out partly here in the grounds of Woburn Abbey at what must be the world's first fake news factory. <laughs>